Good afternoon, and welcome to the Evacuation Day Fairgrounds here in Boston, Massachusetts for this afternoon's game between the Chicago Teetopplers and the Boston Ruffians. At this time, we'd like to introduce the starting lineup and batting order of the visiting Chicago Teetopplers. Batting first, the right fielder, number 23, Umpty Poole. Batting second, the left fielder, number 13, Crispy Yellow. Batting third, the catcher, number 14, Moopy Poundcake. Batting fourth, the shortstop, number 42, Bowtie Harvey. Batting fifth, the second baseman, number 35, Cowie Bangett. Batting sixth, the first baseman, number 11, Ainsley Snakewhacker. Batting seventh, the center fielder, number 22, Dim Barron. Batting eighth, the third baseman, number two, Nevada Escargot. And batting ninth, the pitcher, number 70, Malort Jepson. And let's make some noise, Boston, for your home side, the Boston Ruffians. Please give a good cheer to them as they take the field for this afternoon's game. The left field at number 14, Quiggly Bispo. The second baseman, number 27, Cook Cam Lloyd. The shortstop, number five, Pretend Esposito. The center fielder, number six, Salog Thombed. The first baseman, number three, Gert Junkson. The right fielder, number 17, Throat Boulder. The catcher, number 26, Nib Corker. The third baseman, number 52, Energy Midtown. And taking the mound today, the starting pitcher, number 37, Gary Antoinette. Well, good afternoon to you all, and welcome here on a uh, happy Independence Day, 1920, July 4th is the date. My name is Mill Hamstead. You're listening to Radio WZ, WBZ, the, uh, the the premier radio station of our fair city, Boston, Massachusetts. They got the roughs on the field today. Uh, you know, what a good way to celebrate America here in the, uh, as we kick off the 1920s. It's going to be a great decade, I am sure of that. And uh, the roughs, they're coming into this, uh, this game, 16 and 24, they lost the uh, first game of the series last night to Chicago T Toddlers. That was uh, Umpty Pool grounding out for the first out of the game. And what we're seeing that is Crispy Yellow playing left field today. He's going to pop that one up into center field. Paul Thombit getting that catch, and we're at two outs already. Gary Antoinette on the mound today. He's uh, three and six is his record. That's a single right up the middle. And with two outs, the teetotalers have a runner on with Bowtie Harvey hit three home runs. I am not making that up. Three home runs in last night's game. Seven of the uh, final score was 11 to, uh, 11 to 9, I believe. He's going to ground out for uh, foul number three. And we go to the bottom of the first. Malort Jepson is on the mound for the... Uh, right. Is on the mound for the teetotalers today. Right. Inside. And he's going to start things off by uh, hitting... Well, that's going to be... Uh, Wiggly Bispo on with a single to get things started. Malor Jepson 4 and 2, 12 strikeouts so far this season. He's uh, pitching in his 11th game. This is game number 41 of the 84 game season. And he's going to get Coke Can Lloyd to hit into a fancy Dan double play for out for outs 1 and 2. Too high. Well, pretend Esposito up at the mount, uh, plate right now. Hi. I believe my stats say he's batting 319. I'm gonna get uh, actually wait, I'm getting, getting a 
an updated uh, stat sheet from myself in just a second. Uh, apologies for that. Had uh, had last night's one still here on the uh, on the console here in uh, a beautiful fast city, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, Pretend Esposito's on with a single to get things uh, going, continuing, and uh, Slug Dombin is going to keep that going with a two-out single right to right field on Pool with that one. Going to move Esposito to slide into third. And the Ruffs are trying to put a little bit of uh, offense together now. See if they can do that. And get Junction. Hits it high and far, and it's going to be caught by Dim Barron. So it's going to strand two runners. But uh, strong stat. No runs scored so far. But the, uh, the Ruffs, strong stat to this game. And we'll see how... Gary Antoinette takes this in the uh, second inning with Cowie bang it with a leadoff single here in the second. It's got Ainsley Snakewacker playing first base, which moves, of course, Chris Biello to left field. A bit of a fielding change uh, after yesterday's game where it worked so well for the... Uh, for the T-Toddlers, but Snake Whack is gonna, he's gonna pop that one up for out number one, bringing us to Dim Barron. That's a 3-0 count for Antoinette, having trouble finding that strike zone. Gets him to pop one up, it should be an easy play for Energy Midtown, he waves everybody off right on the third base line. Gets out number two, and it brings up Nevada Escargo. Ruffs are at the plate yet again. And throw Older, fifth in the uh, sixth in the uh, the starting lineup. And he's gonna get things going with extra bases all the way out to center field. Hits the wall, drags to the warning track, and he's in, slides in with a double to get things started here in the bottom of the sixth for the Ruffians. Parker, oh, is he going to hit it to industry? He's going to hit it to industry for a home run, and it's two to nothing in favor of the Ruffs. Bottom of the second, a two-run home run by Nib Parker. And with no outs, that's a uh, that's energy mid-town. He's going to ground that one out for out number one. Bang it to Snake Whack is that one, but uh, here's the pitcher, Hi. Gary Antoinette. Too high. Oh, good. I'm getting my, uh, they're coming in with a new position. I didn't want to give you inaccurate uh, averages and, and uh, it's the who's it's. So, uh, you know, Antoinette's going to pop it up. That's uh, Mort Depson with the uh, the catch, I believe. Oddly uh, enough, he and Depson have a very similar hairstyle. To the style of the time. Must be using some of that fancy dance stuff that the double play was brought to you by fancy dance. Come on, flop in your cloth with a fancy Dan. Top of the lineup, Wiggly Bispo is going to get a double static uh, up with two outs on the board. He's on with a double all the way to the uh, warning track yet again. And Bispo uh, on second. Coke Can Lloyd hitting that double play. He's batting 268, but he's been kind of uh, a hot hitter lately. He's been. Uh, Moving back up into the lineup, and he's uh, batting second overall again. Anyway, Malot Jepson, uh, again, the ERA of 488. He's going to walk Cocan Lloyd, so that's uh, that's actually the 16th walk of the season for Jepson, and only uh, Cocan Lloyd's third walk. Hi! Dan Esposito hit a single in the first. That's going to drop. It's going to drop right short of Crispy Yellow in left field. Race home is going to be just in time, beating the run. So an ABI single for Pretend Esposito. That's number 22 for him. 
and the Ruffs are up 3 0. Well, Slob David's going to hit it just short of the wall. He's in with a double. It's going to bring another one home. Slob David, two for two today with an RBI double. Number 19 for him. And it's 4 0 in okay. favor of the Ruffs here in the bottom of the second. Ken Junction's going to be over two today by grounding that one right to uh, Nevada Escargo. But a couple of runs on the board again. It's four to nothing after two. And Malort Jepson. Best pitch is going to ground it out. Right to Energy Midtown. Make the throw to get Junction in time for round number one. And we go to the top of the lineup second time around. Umpty Pool. That's going to get just past the glove again. Junction, it's going to be throw Boulder. Having to chase it down. Makes a good throw, but Poole slides in with a double. That's double number 14 for him this season. And with one out, it's crispy yellow. A oh, good eye and good fielding by Coke Canloy. Going for the fielder's choice. Getting Poole at third. And the throw is an easy one, so two outs. With Mupi Poundcake, who hit a single in the first. Too high. It's ball one. That one's in the dirt, so that's ball two. Two and one to count. Gary Antoinette, a record of three and six this season. 367. He's going to get a strikeout look into end the inning. That's strikeout number 16 for Gary Antoinette. Doesn't throw a lot of strikeouts, but uh, when he does, it uh, he matter, I guess. Uh, he's got a, he pitched 61 innings, so goes about six strong usually. Pro Boulder is going to ground out the first pitch, right to Cowie Bang it, throws it right to uh, Ainsley Snake Whacker. Nib Parker hit that two run home run, that was home run number two for him of the season, his second home run. He doesn't hit a lot of home runs, but uh, you know, got two more runs, that was actually only his eighth RBI too. He's going to pop All that right. one up and leave it with two outs to Energy Midtown. Too high. We go for one today, two outs, bottom of the third. He's going to pop it up to Nevada Escargo to end the inning. Well, the home run from the second inning from Nib Parker, brought to you by industry brand, colognes, perfumes, and uh, other fragrances. So if it smells good, it's industry, and if it's industry, it smells good. I mean, that seems kind of like a bit of an uh, unnecessary thing to say, but, you know, I guess that's what they tell you. To say. Oh, paper in front of me says so twice. Pitch is outside. Top of the fourth. You're listening to Radio WBZ. I am Mill Hamsteak. This is our fast city, Boston, Massachusetts. Hi. We are live from the Evacuation Day Fairgrounds here on outside. July 4th of 1920. Take the Boston base. Ruffians taking on... The Chicago Teetotalers, and with Gary Antoinette on the mound, Bowtie Harvey will walk for the sixth time this season for him. Cowie bang it right behind him, hits it with a good amount of uh, force behind it, hits it hard, but it's going to fall right to the glove slug thumb bib. Foul number one keeps Harvey at uh, first base. And here's Ainsley Snake Quacker, who's batting 348. Hasn't had a lot of chances in the side, but he's been uh, pretty hot there, and then you see why that is. He just keeps the, the, the chain moving and hits a single. Moving uh, Javi to second. Snake Whacker on first. And uh, his Dim Barron, who, again, you want to talk about that bottom of the order. Didn't 277, but eight home runs. It's going to be a jog for Trope Boulder. Gets the out. And they are trying to get well. Tagging up is Otai Javi. He didn't really uh, have much, uh, didn't look like he had much uh, urgency on that. And he almost got uh, picked off. See right. Inside. Steer right. Nevada Escargo batting 336. Should be an easy one. Right to Energy Midtown. One, two pitch. And that's the end of the four. Well, it's the end of the top of the four. So, Ruffs up four to nine. Take the plate. Starting things off with Gary Antoinette. 
Bringing Coke Can Lloyd to the plate. Only one out. Steer Big right. swing on that one for strike two. 0 2 to count. Makes contact. Gets it right to Jepson. The throw. The snake whack is well in time for out number two. And pretend Esposito. Also two for two today. Been, uh, not an easy day for Coke Can Lloyd. But pretend Esposito is going to get missed the glove. A uh, Dim Barron just couldn't get there in time. He's going to get in with a stand-up double. That's his first extra base hit today. Two singles, one of them for an ABI. He's three for three today. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking. I don't want to do any sort of jinxing. But Wiggly Bispo is a triple away for hitting from the cycle. You know the triple's kind of the high that want to hit. Obviously, but, uh, you know, maybe think about the next time he's around the bat. So Slug Thompson's going to ground it out right to the pitcher, make the play at first. And uh, let's go four, but the roughs got five. Five to nothing. With a lot, Jepson. <clears throat> that things off here in the top of the fifth. Four. The Chicago t Tartalus gets the line drive. It drops right before second base. And he's on with a single. That is Jepson's eighth hit of the season. He's batting 350. Seven hits off 20 at bats. Now I know it's a small sample size, but he only batted 238 last year with Chicago. And Umpty Pools gonna hit into a fancy Dan double play. So two outs, wipe uh, Jepson off of first. And put two outs on the board. Crispy Yellow's gonna drop that one into center field all the way to the one and track. And he's dead, he's on with a double. That's his first hit of the game. Double number 11 for Crispy Yellow. That brings us to Moofy Pound Cake. Struck out his last at bat. Gonna hit it right to pretend Esposito. Throw is an easy one. And that's out number three. So, Chicago, bats are not happening for them. They are facing a tough, tough pitcher in Gary Antoinette. What Jepson facing Jet Jungson, who had a huge day yesterday, is not having the same success. He's going to strike out looking, so that is strikeout number 13 on the season from Lord Jepson. Doesn't throw a lot of strikeouts, but uh, gets good. His pro owner is out. Jet Jungson was 4 for 5 yesterday. Not having the same kind of luck today. 0 for 3. Boulder's gonna hit it high into the air. I don't think it's got the distance. It might. I can't really tell. It's gonna be off the wall. So Dim Barron is right there to play it off the wall. It's a double for Boulder, his second double of the game. And his eighth this season. So Nib Corker. Well, he had a two-run home run the last time. There was a uh, man on second. He's gonna have to settle for a single. Have to go and track back, but it's gonna bring home. Throw Boulder from second. So that's an RBI single for Nib Parker. Responsible three of these six runs today. So six nothing to the Ruffs. Keep it going. Get Energy Midtown his first hit, and it's going to put runners on first and second. Over to the pitcher spot. Gary Antoinette here in the bottom of the fifth. One out. That's, uh, that's inside for ball one. Not going to do it over to, well, it's going to be a 5-4-3 fancy Dan to end the inning, but the Ruffs do get another run on the board. After five, it's 6-0 Boston, and that fancy Dan double play is 
five four three if you're scoring it in your your scorecards. And it's brought to you by Fancy Dan for local products. You know they got a whole I got a whole list of stuff to read out. They got like crimson powder. I don't know what that does. Uh, sculpt in poxies, uh, dialing salves. You know, I, you know, I use some salves, but not from not from my hair. I haven't had hair in a couple of years. That's falling out. But uh, you know, I guess the young people like it. They like their hair to look all like shiny and like it's a uh, new piece of metal or something. So, you know, fancy Dan fall for product, don't be a midfield, be a fancy Dan. Cowie Bang is going to pop it up. I think that was uh, Energy Midtown who got that catch. They kind of converted him and uh, Wiggly Bispo. Top of the six, that's going to be foul for Ainsley Snake Whacker. Hello. One, five, six in the lineup. Javi, Bang it, and Snake Whacker for Chicago. It's actually a tough. Uh, they're being, they're being kept uh, pretty quiet today, but that is not an easy four, five, six in the lineup as that's going to be Antoinette getting another strikeout. A strikeout number 17 for him this season and retires aside. So, over to the bottom of the sixth. And Jepson taking the mound again. His pitch count's only at 60, so he ain't starting to see him. If, if, the, boss, if the roughs can, uh, can get, get him to throw a lot of, throw a lot of pitches this, uh, this inning, might be over for him in the sixth innings, and uh, yeah, they might see several shocks. We had a great day yesterday, and that's going to be an extra base hit. Wiggly Bispo, four for four today, hits another double. Double number 10 for him this season. He's got 50, uh, 62 hits this season, including today. That's amazing. That's, that's really, really good. Got to be somewhere in the high end of the, of the league leaders. Cocan oh, Lloyd's gonna walk. He has not had a single hit all game, but he's walked twice. And that's gonna do it. Yep, and here comes the new sign in in a double switch. Out comes Ainsley Snake Whacker, moving Christy Yellow to first. And in comes Better Thrusty. So Dervish chops. He's gonna come in. He's actually such a new sign. I don't even have any statistics on him from when he played for uh, played for the Norfolk Pole Hoppers. But he got the win on the record yesterday. So. Uh, Coming in to try to just do a little bit of damage control, but he's gonna let a single go. And that was Slug Thombid with a two RBI single, and it takes to nothing in favor of the Ruffs. Bottom of the sixth. Can't complain about this one too badly. Yeah, right. Junction taking it'd be great to see get Junction get a good hit here. One and two to count. That was out uh, very outside. And he gets some swing in on that one. A strikeout over four today for Gert. Not a good day for the man named Gert. Swing at that one. That's going to drop the throat fold up. He's going to round first and go for second. He's going to bring home Slog Dombid. Nine to nothing in favor of the Ruffs. And I mean, we're, you know, they put up a good amount of runs yesterday. But you know this this defense is just is doing just fine. They they put up nine in a losing effort yesterday, eleven to nine the final score. You know nine runs is something they can definitely do. We've seen it. We saw it as, as recently as yesterday. So there you go. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 about as pleased you can get you can ask for this one. Uh, this is fantastic. Gets him striking out. That's Nib Quark, I believe, striking out to end the uh, inning. However, here comes Dim Barron to the plate. Top of the seventh. Still going to be seeing Gary Antoinette. Throws pitch 59. That's going to be a single right off the middle. Uh, 
So that's going to put Chicago on with a leadoff single, bringing up Nevada Escago. Stolen base on the uh, on the ball three pitch, and that puts Barron at second. So Nevada Escago gonna potentially bring him home. No, it's gonna be good feeling by Wiggly Bispo. So that's a single for Escago. Puts Barron on third. Too high. Well, 1-1 one, one does score, but it's on a fielder's choice. So Jepson, or excuse me, Sharks, I guess, uh, didn't take care of business there. And we go back up to Umpty Pool, who's one for three today. He's going to be making a two for four. He's going to be on with a single. So uh, big concern, and as Gary Antoinette putting runners on first and second. Allowed one run already. Still very much a uh, uh, game in control of the uh, by the uh, by the roughs, but you know, just want to make sure everything's all right. He's gonna get a struck out. He's gonna get a strikeout on crispy yellow. One triple away. He's only hit one this season. He's one triple away from hitting for the cycle. Not gonna do it that way. He's gonna go four for five. And that might be his last half bat. He's grounded out right to the first baseman. Then comes Carlisle County. So the uh, roughs here in the top of the eighth. Go to their bullpen. Getting, uh, getting a tough one, actually, there. That was uh, Bowtie Harvey. Yeah. Bringing up Howie Bang It in 345. Yeah. Today. Had a pretty quiet day. Three, that's going to drop right into well. Slog Dombin tries to slide to make the catch. Gets his body in front of it. That's a bit of a risky play, but uh, it seemed like he knew he was doing Just couldn't get the, uh, couldn't get the catch. And here's Doug Brainin. Hey! Doug Brainin is gonna, uh. He's gonna get on with a double. My goodness. And we head over to Dim Barron, who is gonna. Well, he's gonna uh, hit into an out, but it's gonna sacrifice home. Uh, Cowie bang it from third. Nevada Escargo pops up the first one in foul territory. Looks like that's in Midtown chasing it. Gets the catch foul number three. We head to the bottom of the eighth. And in comes Jepson Schwanwich. So 
So, bottom of the eighth, Copan Lloyd. 0 for 2 today, 2 walk. Faces uh, Jepson Schwanwich, the closing pitcher, after coming in for Dervish Chops in his second uh, relief appearance. In, in two games, he's of course the uh, replacement for the uh, dearly departed Goop Lothage. Uh, we did have a moment of silence the other day. Um, a memorial will be um, constructed over in Rothstein Park for the, uh, the Chicago uh, relief pitcher. And of course, a commemorative ham has been sent to the appropriate people. The count kick's going to get that one. Getting a uh, Pretend Esposito. Bitch is outside. In foul territory, his slug Dombid. Had uh, three Abbey Ice in the uh, in contention for the finest standings of the day, I think. Take your base. Gonna walk. So uh, uh Sandwich not having the best of uh, times out there right now. If get Junction gonna have a, a bit of a day again, he went man's over four today, but he went four for five yesterday. So I have no idea what we're gonna expect from get Junction, and that's gonna be what you expect to get another strikeout from him. That's the third time today he struck out. So you know, if you hear a bit of impatience out of uh, ruffian fans about get Junction, I think that's kind of what ends up happening. So is uh. Hi. They kind of want a little bit more, they want to see a little bit more out of him. They, they did pick him up. Um, a lot of people kind of wonder why they picked him up when they have Rogue Bison. Trying to get some playing time. And he doesn't really perform consistently. Yesterday was amazing. He was four for five, hit a home run. But, uh, consistent enough. Anyway, the Ruffs got a chance to two outs away from winning this game. I'm pretty cool. He's going to drop that one into right field. Throw Boulder chasing after that one. He's in with a double for Umpty Pool. Third hit for him today. Brings us a crispy yellow. Yellow's going to pop that one up into shallow left field. He don't make the catch. And the last out, potentially this game, well, I would imagine for the last out of this game, is on the shoulders of Moopy Pound Cake. No, I had a great day today. He's only uh, one for four. Ball two. Callao County. Got an 0 1 record. No saves. 5 0 1 ERA. <laughs> only four strikeouts. He's played. Uh, he's pitched 23 Zero. innings. He's going to get another strikeout on his record, and the Ruffs are going to take the win. With Palau County finishing the job set up by Gary Antoinette. And that's going to do it for us today. That is our final score. Uh, the final score of this one. The Boston Ruffians getting the win. Nine runs off 16 hits. They defeat the Chicago Teetotalers. Two runs off 12 hits. And they each, each, each team is now taking a game from this series. Final game tomorrow, of course. Uh... Boston, of course, uh, will uh, will increase their record to 17 and 24. Chicago drops to 19 and 22 after that one. I believe that uh, puts uh, well, yeah, it doesn't. There's no uh, there's no there's no winning or losing streak on that one as uh, they they exchanged results yesterday. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, there's there's your there's your result. The uh, winning pitcher today, Gary Antoinette, going seven innings, only allowing one run, striking out three. Lord Jepson gets the loss going five innings before giving it up to Dervish Chops for the sixth and seventh. Um, Lord Jepson gave up two home runs, eight end runs in total. And we thank our friends at the Honey Wheat Tobacco Company, <laughs> bringing you uh, fresh hand rolled cigarettes coming from uh, the Carolinas and the, the, the tobacco roads there. Uh, they they are they are sponsoring the finest dandies of the day for the entirety of the Continental League season for the year 1920. Not just here, not just today, but every day in every uh, city. So uh, third finest inning. Look at it. So three roughs right there. Pro Boulder going three for four with three triple, uh, three doubles, excuse me, <clears throat> and uh, one RBI. He's the third finest inning. Slug Thombed gets the second finest inning, going three for four with a double and three RBIs. But the finest inning of the day, he's going to get a free cat and a cigarettes. 
You can smoke him when you got him. Uh, is Wiggly Bispo going four for five? A triple away from the cycle. Hit a home run. Uh, two doubles and an ABI. He only had one ABI after all of that uh, all that hit day, but I guess he just was getting on base a lot. Um, so there you go. That is the well. It's actually the entirety of the outfield for the uh, Boston Ruffians. That's not too bad, I gotta say. Uh, that is from the Honey Wheat Tobacco Company, who humbly request that you smoke wheat every day. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, please do join us tomorrow here on Radio WBZ, uh, broadcasting from our, fine, our fair city of Boston, Massachusetts. That's the last game of this series, and we hit the halfway point of the 1920 season already. It's amazing, uh, as uh, the Boston Ruffians would like to go to, seven, uh, go to 18 and 24. With another win on the mound is Butters Velocidad taking on Split T Hammond. So a couple of rookies, strong, uh, strong pitching. And both of them should be a good game. Until then, uh, we're gonna return to the music. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Fourth of July. Go out there, be safe, celebrate fun, uh, well, and uh, enjoy enjoy the the wonders that 1920 is gonna bring uh, for the rest of this year. I'm Mill Hamsteak. This is Radio WBZ, and as always, go Ruffs.